Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name is Jim. Thank you for riding along today. I always appreciate your company. Let's just keep going here. About 40 miles an hour. That's fast enough, don't you think? You can find us at babyboomertales.com. Once you get to our webpage, there's a link to our YouTube channel. And the thing I want to talk about the YouTube channel is we have closed captioning. I like closed captioning on just about everything. Our closed captioning is auto-generated. That means that YouTube's computer or whatever does that. We don't go in and put it in. So, once in a while, like I say, Baby Boomer Tales, and it comes up Baby Boomer T-A-I-L-S, or I'll say, hello there, and it might say, you're square. Something like that, cause, but it's pretty good about picking up my voice. It really is. It's better than most closed captioning services as far as accuracy, but they do mess up once in a while. That's okay with me. I do like it anyway. Also, at our YouTube channel, Baby Boomer Tales, there is a link called Live, and on there you can watch our videos. So where it says videos, those are just our podcasts. Where it says live, it's our videos. I tried to go in and change it, and YouTube will not let me change that. It's a default of theirs, and that's okay. It's their platform, their ball. They can do what they want with it. I'm just glad to participate. You ever play ball when you're a kid with some other kids, and one kid brings the ball? Whatever ball it is, basketball or football or baseball, you only usually have one ball there. Not always, but usually. That kid gets mad or gets hurt or his mom calls him for dinner or something and he takes his ball home with him. You really don't want that if you don't have another ball. So I play by what YouTube says and all these other services. I'm happy that they put me on there. I know they're not doing me a favor. I'm doing them a favor. They make a lot of money off of guys like me, and that's okay. I have the ability to make money off of YouTube also. All the rules have changed since the Internet has really taken over, haven't they? You don't just go out and get a job at a gas station anymore. You make a TikTok video. If it goes viral, well, you're rolling in the dough. Baby. This year we cut the cord on our television. What I'm saying by that is we had a television service. You know, some of you have cable and some of you have satellite. And it got so expensive for us that I decided there has to be a better way. Now, we have two antennas on our roof. One points towards Topeka, Kansas, and one points towards Kansas City, Missouri. And I can pick up a lot of stations there, but the quality is not as good as I would like. It's okay. I mean, I could watch it. If I had an older TV, I wouldn't notice a difference. And maybe there's something that I could do to that antenna signal to make it all HD. But I still wouldn't have some of the stuff I had. With our television service, we had been growing tired of it. Besides the price, we'd get on a streaming service and say, isn't this picture better than on our TV provider? Yeah, I think it is. So we went back and forth like that. Well, when we finally did cut the cord and we got a streaming service to watch live TV, network TV, all that stuff, you know, the football game and the news and the network TV shows and all that, plus streaming, and all of a sudden it's opened our eyes to streaming, and we pay less than half of what we were paying with a television service. I don't want to say cable, and I don't want to say satellite, because you'll come to your own conclusion, it'll probably be wrong, and doesn't really matter anyway. All I know is we cut the cord, and we're very happy we did. I never thought I would. But then again, 40-some years ago, I never thought I'd get cable. And then it went from there. But I do know that to watch a streaming show, the picture is more clear and sharper and better than my old TV provider. I still have those antennas in case the internet went down. I could still watch Gilligan's Island if I wanted to. If I could find it. 
So what we're going to do today is we're going to do volume four of the television seasons and this volume four takes in the 1990 through 91 season clear through the 1999 2000 season. What I'm going to give you is the top three rated shows that year plus one other just to keep it even Stephen balanced out all that. So we're going to start and usually the fourth show is, you know, a show that's further down in the rankings, not in the top 10 usually here. Some of them are, but not all of them. I'll try to give you a little commentary on my take on some of these shows as we go through it. Like that matters. We all have an opinion and mine is way low on your opinion scale. Unless I say something you don't like, then all of a sudden my take on something is very important to you because it's not lining up with maybe what you like it. Sorry, didn't mean to be mean. I don't care what you like and you shouldn't care what I like. And maybe we'll like the same stuff. On TV, it's possible. I really think it's possible. Let's try it. Let's see. I'll meet you on the other side of this, okay? 1990 through 91 television season. The number one ranked show that year, Cheers, where everybody knows your name. The number two show was 60 Minutes. The number three show was Roseanne. And the number 18 show that season was Coach. Remember Coach? Craig T. Nelson and Jerry Van Dyke. Remember those two? The 1991 through 1992 television season, the number one show was 60 Minutes. I don't know about 60 Minutes being as popular anymore. There's such a controversy about new shows anymore. I'm not sure it is. I know, you know, we don't watch it like we used to. Number two, Roseanne. Roseanne Barr. John Goodman. Those little homely kids that made you think that this thing is real. These people are real. They're not actors. I remember the first time I watched it, my wife said, I found a TV show, and these people are like people next door. So we watched it and liked it and watched it for years. Number three show that season is Murphy Brown. I liked old Murphy, even though our political views didn't always line out. Our music views did. I followed her for years. I didn't like her new one, though, when it came back, you know. It was still Murphy Brown, and it was nothing like the old original. The number 16 show that year, Northern Exposure. Up there in Alaska, little quirky town. 1992 through 93 television season. Number one, again, 60 Minutes. Number two, again, Roseanne. Number three that year, Home Improvement, you know, Tool Time. And the number 19 show... This one had Burt Reynolds, one of the few things I ever liked Burt in. I know he was a big star and all kinds of people liked him. He was in a movie with my favorite actress of all time, with Sally Field. But this TV show was called Evening Shade. I really liked that show. 1993 through 1994 television season. Number one, 60 Minutes again. Number two, Home Improvement. Number three, Seinfeld, George, Kramer, Jerry, and Elaine. And the number 16 show that season, Full House. 1994 through 1995 TV season. Number one, Seinfeld. Number two, ER. Remember that? There's always an emergency. Dr. Green, I like Dr. Green. Now, George Clooney was in that, and he was okay, but if you ever see the movie, Old Brother, Where Art Thou? That's George's crowning achievement, in my opinion. Number three show that year, Home Improvement. And the number 24 show, The Nanny. The 1995 through 96 television season. Number one show, ER. Number two, Seinfeld. Number three, Friends. Didn't they always go down to a bar and sit on the same couch? I think so. Number 17, Walker, Texas Ranger. The 1996 through 1997 TV season. Number one show, ER. The number two show, Seinfeld. The number three show, Suddenly Susan. 
the number 27 show, Law and Order. The 1997 through 1998 TV season, the number one show that year, Seinfeld, so it made a comeback. Number two, ER. Number three, Veronica's Closet. This is with Kirstie Alley. I do not remember the show. Do you remember that show? I always kind of held it against old Kirstie for taking Diane Lane's place. Wasn't that her name on Cheers? Diane? Anyway, the number five show, Touched by an Angel. 1998 through 1999 TV season. Number one show, ER. Number two, Friends. Number three show, Frasier, Kelsey Grammer. And the number 19 show, Becker. Now this has, you know, uh, what was his name? Sam? There. Sam from Cheers, and I like that fine. In fact, he played Becker better than he played Sam, I think. Grouchy old guy. That was a good show. 1999 through 2000 TV season. Right here, TV changed. Number one, who wants to be a millionaire on Tuesday nights? Number two, who wants to be a millionaire on Thursday nights? And the number three show that season, who wants to be a millionaire on Sunday nights? <laughs> I, I was guilty. We watched every night with old Regis. Remember that one guy? I think he was the first one to win a million bucks. He finally had to phone a friend for help. You know, they had several little things you could do to help you answer a question. And he called his dad and said, Dad, I just want to say hi on TV. I don't need any help with this question. He turned to Regis, said the answer. <laughs> There's clean sweep there. Who wants to be a millionaire? The number 19 show that season, though, was Judging Amy. Our TV watching habits have definitely changed over the years. It used to be we'd have an antenna or a rabbit ears, get two or three channels. If you had a rabbit ears and you lived in an urban area, you'd have to turn that rabbit ears or hit the side of the TV. Maybe put aluminum foil on the rabbit ears. Get up on the roof and turn that antenna a little and have the wife yelling out the window, that's good, honey. Stop. Stop. Right there. Then we got color TV, and it was wonderful and great. And then cable came along, and the picture is better, and all of a sudden we got more than four local channels. Satellite came around and even added more for our viewing enjoyment. Then we have flat screen TVs. We had to get rid of all those old heavy TVs, the square ones that weighed 80 pounds. If you really had a big TV, it was one of those projection jobs that weighed 120 pounds. You thought a 60-inch TV, there'd never be anything larger. And now they're just filling up the landfills. And you had a 40-inch TV instead of a 19-incher. And your TV was not a piece of furniture anymore. Maybe it hung on the wall or above the fireplace. And these TVs weren't square anymore, but they were shaped like a theater screen. And they're as flat as could be. And the picture was crystal clear. And all of a sudden, you could see that mole on her chin or that tattoo on that guy's arm or the sweat rolling down or a tear forming in their eye. And all of a sudden now, here we are in 2023 and we're cutting our cord and watching everything via the internet. There's thousands of different things to watch, and yet there a lot of times there's nothing to watch. Network TV is becoming a dinosaur in so many ways. They're having to reinvent themselves. The TV season went from having 30 or 34 shows for a season to having 8 or 10. Our attention span must be getting shorter but if you search and you watch, you can find stuff. What I have found, for 30 years I had the luxury of having DVR where I just cruised through the commercials. It replaced my old VCR. And all of a sudden with these streaming channels, unless you want to pay them, you can get it for free a lot of times. Or even if you pay for a service, you have commercials. 
If you're fortunate, you can find one service that has live TV and stuff that you have DVR. But all of a sudden, we went from watching no commercials, fast forward through every commercial on earth except for the Super Bowl, to having to sit through commercials again. Everything ebbs and flows in life. Absolutely everything. I can't think of a thing that doesn't, except maybe God. That's the only constant I can ever see in life. But that's okay. That's the way it is designed, and that is the hand that we have been dealt, and that's okay with me. It's very nice to have you every week. I cannot begin to express my gratitude. I hope I've accomplished what I've set out to do. That is to entertain you a little in a clean and wholesome way. Something that you wouldn't be afraid to let your kids or your grandkids listen to, even if they don't get it. Always be kind. There's no better way. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out.